guys. I just speak a little bit in Russian just to make sure that we are online here. I'm with Richard Friends and here is just the first time in Thai latency podcast. And so we will talk about virtual reality, about Richard, and maybe you guys don't know who Richard is. Hello, Richard. Hello. And we're glad to see so you here actually first. And uh, this is very strange type of communication because uh, sometimes on a podcast people have to talk face on face. And right now I am with the TV yeah. uh, here and you right. are alone in a room in a virtual star studio as I can see. I'm where I'm always am. <laughs> yeah. Can you please introduce yourself for some guys who don't know you? Uh, all right, my, my name is Richard and, you know, I, I think about three years ago I stumbled upon a solution to track your camera and be able to, in real time, put yourself from a green screen into a video game. And that totally changed my, you know, my view of how to do things in the future. And even ever since three years ago I've been totally into uh, virtual production and trying to figure out how to do virtual production in the best way. And also, about three years, two years ago, I made a decision to try to share as much as my findings as possible with the world, instead of keeping it for myself. And uh, that was a really cool moment, because it just opened up a lot of doors and it's a blessing to be able to share this knowledge with a lot of people. So during these three years, I've started up this studio with the three fantastic uh, partners. And uh, I don't know, the virtual production train just keeps going and every day is a new day and it's fantastic. It's a fantastic time to be alive, actually. It's yeah, yeah, super totally. powerful. And it is fantastic time to grow up. Uh... Actually, yeah. uh, what I want to start, uh, it is not about only your three years uh, of virtual production and, well, you involved in Actually, it. Actually, you uh, have to ask me what, what, what I'm cel- celebrating. I'm celebrating today. You know what? Uh, oh, really? I think this is it's your standard Friday. one year with anti-latency. Oh. One oh year God. with anti-latency trackers. Uh, so cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers. Thank you. Okay, and what I want to discuss it is uh, how did you jump in this business? What is your background? Why, why you found uh, the technology for virtual production? Why you're so inspired by the market? And what is like? What is your way on this? Yeah, yeah. So my my background is uh, I started out super early with doing uh, visual effects uh, work. Uh, I, I I remember. I was doing a. Uh, I got uh, hired as an, you know, and not an actor, but an, uh, a, a guy in a commercial, and I, and I made quite a lot of money on doing that part in the commercial, and I was so uh, impressed by the film and TV crew there that I just, uh, at that point, just made up my mind that I'm going to work in this missus because it was so cool to see everything come to come alive on the set. And I also remember in the back room, they had a visual effects guy who were at the same time as they were shooting the film, shooting the commercial. He was, you know, receiving the dailies and doing the visual effects work on set, pretty much on set. I just spent my whole week doing that commercial in the back room with the visual effects guy. And that, that, that was when, when I was like 15, 16 years ago, 15, Whoa. 16 years old. And I used, you know, I had to work with this. So I, you know, downloaded all the software, the 3D softwares and starting my way into learning how to do, you know, compositing and uh, 3D work and etc. And then I just been working with that. And I also started a few of my own companies doing exactly that uh, post-production work. Uh, and, you know, as everyone who been doing post production knows how much time it takes to do you know regular 3d renders and you have to wait for the renders and you have to set up these complicated render forms and so i've been you know eyeing at unreal engine for a while uh, and and i i've seen it through the years but i have never really thought it was really there yet but i think three years ago I just saw something on the, on YouTube, and oh man, this is going. This is getting close to being 
look, looking really good. And then I started to work with uh, Unreal Engine. And I think Unreal Engine is the game changer to be able to do uh, virtual production in, in uh, real time. And coming from a post-production workflow, it's a hallelujah moment to be able to see what you get at the same time as you're doing it. So I guess it was a no-brainer. <laughs> Yeah. If that yes. answers your question, I don't know. I, I hope so, yeah. I hope so, but uh, it's an answer for community. Uh, this is quite fun because uh, you start uh, your virtual production journey with uh, YouTube, and now everyone who wants to start a virtual production journey will uh, will face your channel. How you start this? Exactly. Why, why you understand uh, that the world needs it? Yeah, because when on my own in my office, I, I had a small I was free, freelance at the moment. I just left my old company uh, uh, that I started because uh, I needed to do something else, something you know more f futuristic. I wanted to work in the future and not working in a traditional, you know, production company doing traditional production company stuff. I wanted to do something else. Uh, so I, I spent a lot. I spent about fifty percent of my time doing freelance work, uh, you know, to be able to put food on the table, and fifty percent of the other time spent into, you know, researching uh, new technology. And one of those things was to be able to work in Unreal Engine in real time. And then I figured out, uh, you stumbled on that you could track the camera with with the wife, and while on that process trying to figure everything out i googled i've been to google page number 90 i don't know if anyone has been on the <laughs> that far back in google and i couldn't find any information on how to do this except for some old research papers that i couldn't understand but i found some guy in some part of the world who had done something similar and you know tried to contact him and couldn't get any information and that's where i understood okay if i can make this easier for someone else it's totally worth it so i i will just put up whatever i learned and you know to help people get a head start and the the thought was that okay maybe i could get more people interested into this and help them on the way uh, so that we together could figure out how to do this uh, together and i really think uh, it turned out like that uh, and I, it, it's been super helpful to have so many excellent guys and gals you know helping each other out to m maneuvering how to get a you know a decent water production setup so so that's why uh, and actually if i remember right just one year ago this is crazy already one year ago when we started to work together uh, and we discussed like the future video uh, on your YouTube that described the entire latency. As I remember, you have uh, you had just uh, like around one thousand followers, and now you have much yeah. more. Uh, it is almost ten uh, k already. And yeah, exactly. uh, how your business changed with this uh, with this like influencer platform? During this year, it's been a crazy year. But if I could have managed to, you know, still keep doing YouTube videos. Uh, I think we, we could have reached a lot, a lot of more numbers. But for me, it's not about the numbers. It's uh, it's cool to be able to reach people and help people and also grow the channel. Uh, that that's really cool. Uh, but I think, uh, of course, having a YouTube channel, I have a lot of you know work coming in from the YouTube channel and uh, a lot of interest for for the studio and uh, a lot of clients here in Sweden find us through our uh, my YouTube channel and also Virtual Star Studios YouTube channel and Instagram uh, pages. So I think having a social presence is uh, really important and especially for, you know, showing clients what you can do with uh, uh, with this technology because it can sometimes be hard to, you know, sell uh, uh, sell the, the the effect of virtual production to someone who has no no clue at all. And we find that the most ex effective way is to have the client just come in here, put yourself on the green screen, and you can see yourself real time 
somewhere somewhere else and it's that's where you know the, the it really clicks in the brain that how powerful uh, this is uh, yeah and this is an ama amazing point to my next question like virtual production it is like a market it is a technology it is also a business and uh when we try to understand what it is exactly uh, we can find a lot of definitions uh, through the internet it is like uh, yeah. Each channel can say that virtual production is and uh, virtual production are, and we actually don't understand what is virtual production. Uh, and uh, if we don't have your channel, for example, and someone new yeah. for this industry will try to find the information about virtual production, what do you think? How you yeah. can determine this uh, this term in this market, this something? Yeah, yeah. In, in these cases, I always uh, go to, to my uh, my colleague uh, Lars. Uh, he explains <laughs> this very, very well, and and usually when he explains it, I zoom out because he's really good at taking care of explaining <laughs> the different uh, and what word production is. But for me, uh, word production is um, green screen or LED wall, uh, and you get uh, results instantly uh, by. You know, shooting everything in camera, pretty much. Uh, I don't know. I I don't really have a good explanation. But what, what, what's your definition of virtual production? Yeah, for us, it's just uh, like uh, the new fast-growing market because you know our story. We start from VR, and uh, it was like location-based yeah. entertainment, and also some industrial and safety trainings. And we yeah. developed our system to do real-time applications. And when all this pandemic yeah. madness came to the humanity, uh, we see that, yeah. oh, okay, our market has just shut down and we have yeah. to find new opportunities uh, to promote our system, to help to people to do 3D real-time stuff. And in this moment, we found you, we found Eximetry, we started to explore this market and so we uh, already finished a long way this year. We understand the industry better. We know how the product has to be changed for this. Uh, we yeah. do new product line for virtual production, especially when we understand the pains of the guys who want to yeah. build the studios. That's why for us, virtual production right now is like the main direction of our company, actually, because yeah. we still don't understand what's happened with VR. And even like Mark Zuckerberg that uh, already say that, okay, we have to build metaverses and VR, one of the driver of metaverse, it's still uh, not a, not a vehicle to fight with pandemic restrictions. That's why we understand yeah. that virtual production, it is a future of real-time application and tracking because just small insight from our business, we see that a lot of integrators right now working not only with advertising, not only with TV or some show and live events, but even they just rebuild hotels room and uh, corporates room uh, to virtual production studios. This is like a yeah. crazy, crazy uh, actions that uh, go in, uh, in, in this world right yeah. now, according to virtual production. And uh, yeah. I just want to move to the, like uh, a little bit more uh, information about a Virtual Star Studio. And you guys uh, implement Creed projects and it is a lot of. Also, you have time to make uh, educational videos uh, for YouTube. Uh, also, you have your own community, and I see how active you are. Like, uh, you are yeah. on every yeah. second post on the Facebook. You try to help to people to do some stuff. And it uh, looks like the virtual production is your life's work. And so, uh, what yeah. is the, the most inspiring things on this for you? Yeah, but, you know, sometimes everything just clicks. And I think that I really feel that I'm at the right points in time uh, right now because uh, everything i've been doing up to this point has you know uh, I, i've gathered experience during you know my 15 20 years of uh, professional work uh, by doing a lot of different stuff from you know directing to post-production to uh, pre-production to production to programming to everything and and you know this world production 
thing kind of encapsulates all of my interests. <laughs> and that's amazing because I can, I can just every day do all of my interests every day at the same time. And, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's cool. And I think it's really nice to, f- to be able to actually answer questions that people have, uh, instead of just saying, I don't know, but actually, I actually, you know, see some questions and I know the answer and that's, that's a cool thing. And it's, it, it, it's nice. And, you know, having the time to, uh, time is always a problem. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would yeah. like to do more, but I think that since after I got uh, kids, uh, I think you learn to be more effective with your time. Uh, oh, and because uh, you know when the kids are asleep, you know you have one hour and you need to do all this, the whole to-do list, and some you know you just manage to do that uh, and i think uh, us humans are if you know that you have a set time or a particular time uh, schedule to do these tasks you will get it done no matter what uh, and i think kids help you to kind of forces you to uh, pre- uh, you know schedule your time a bit better and be more vice with your time uh, i think i have to discuss it with my wife <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> Very oh, good yeah, point. yeah. <laughs> uh, how much time you spend on the business and how to find this work-life balance or it is not important for you how you build this this schedule yeah i, I think it could be quite interesting to know that during this year this oh, it's it's one year almost today uh, I also been on dad leave. Uh, you know, in Sweden we have a dad leave or something. Uh, and I've been fifty percent of my time has been I've been with the kids. So I I actually only kind of worked mm-hmm. uh, officially fifty time. But of course, when the kids are asleep, I can work. And uh, uh, I'm I think it's also good with the kids because it forces me to you know leave the phone and be there with the kids and i actually think that i probably would have gone into the wall this year if i haven't had kids because i will i would have just worked non-stop until my uh, body would have sh- shut up uh, sh- shut down so uh, I-, I think it's back to just uh, setting goals and managing your time and having a, a really, a pri- you know, pri- prioritizing your time. And, you know, the studio always goes first. Uh, so if we are having particularly busy month, I have to just calm down on the YouTube stuff and uh, everything else uh, and prioritize whatever we are building here. Cause this is the serious winter we're building something together and we have you know high goals and high plans and we don't have any external uh financing etc it's all our own money put into this and you know if we make some money we invest some more uh so uh so um yeah i kind of f- forgot the question but uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is interesting yeah this is cool when we can talk not about only my questions but uh, you have some thoughts about it and uh, I yeah, guess reg- uh, regarding the kids we're often at the studio doing stuff and I can uh, I can incorporate them I need to learn a new skill I need to learn something then I can get both of the kids together and we can jump into Unreal Engine and we can you know make a small game and while we're making a small game i can you know figure some things out uh or learn how to do a particular thing that i need to learn uh and i think that's one way to you know incorporate everything so it's more of a lifestyle than you know work or uh, vacation yeah, this yeah, is cool when you can, can just fuse two sides of your life. And uh, I guess I guess family help you not to burn out uh, on the work because uh, usually yeah. it is a big problem for professionals in our industry. 
Yeah, exactly. And and as I said, my, my partners Emma and uh, Kalle, they are really awesome, and they also love kids. They have kids, and and we help each other out. So we we can you know help each other babysit uh, and, and 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 you know when we need to do something. So I think I think you know the studio is kind of my family as well. So it's a big family, and we all help each other out. Uh, yeah. And okay. uh, I think our community has beautiful. to know that uh, you don't need to you, you don't need to choose like between family and business, and it is possible to combine uh, both things. It is very important yeah, point. Exactly. And uh, I, now I, I want to come back to some details in our work because uh, I hope that it is a lot of professionals, but also I hope it is a part of UB players on this virtual production who want to build their own studio or they want to explore what the opportunity. And there are a lot of options for now to build a virtual production starting from the chroma key yeah. and the Vive and uh, go yeah. to, let's say, like Moses or Stipe and crazy expensive stuff, cameras, lighting and uh, LED screens yeah. uh, on, on the ang of the angles uh, of your studio. And uh, yeah. uh, what do you think, how should the perfect, like the ideal one virtual production uh, studio be equipped? I think you need to have a good tracking, uh, a trusty tracking system. Uh, and you need to uh, have some a good lens encoders, and you have to have a good cameras, and and I think also the lenses on, on the camera are really important mm. uh, to get good lenses. Uh, that uh, you know, it's it's like in traditional still photography, traditional film photography. Uh, it's not about the camera. It's not about uh, everything. It's about the light and the lens. Uh, and and I think I think that's a good start to get a good lens and a good uh, good lighting uh, of the green screen uh, together with a good uh, trusty tracking system that will not fail you. <laughs> and 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 that, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. And then you I, also have to calibrate. I think the calibration is oh. something that a lot of people are missing. You really need to calibrate your. Uh, your tracking system with your camera and your lenses, uh, and that's you know the main thing to getting good uh, results. Uh, and I know the good thing about calibrating is that you only need to do it once, and then then it's uh, good. Uh, mm -hmm. But you really need to do it good. Uh, so. I, I think that's okay. it. Okay. Uh, uh, the most important uh, thing. But of course, that depends. You you need to have the computers as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I think you missed one one very important detail. Uh, like you have a great team of uh, very professional people. And uh, I, oh, yeah. I, I would like to ask you about them. Like, how did you find these professionals? How you build the team? How you're working with the team? Maybe some secrets uh, to find, like uh, the balance between uh, to be a boss and to be a friend, kind of this, what you can say about it. How many people uh, in your team right now? Uh, we, we, uh, we, 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 we're just, we're just four. Uh, four. You know, regulars here uh, oh. for inside Virtual Star Studios, but we want to expand it to more uh, more technicians and more uh, free artists. Right now, we are doing all the uh, all these positions we are doing on a freelance basis. So we're when we need a free artist, we hire a free artist, and uh, when we need camera cameraman, we hire cameraman. Mm -hmm. Just like a regular production. Uh, and when we need a sound sound guy for the uh, we hire them, uh, but uh, I think that's uh, what we, that's what we at Virtual Star Studios are looking at now. Uh, we need to expand the team, uh, but you know, in this pandemic, it's super hard to you know think forward or plan forward because uh, they keep. Uh, loosen the restrictions and then they take the restrictions back uh, and you know the whole market is going in all different uh, directions we were actually supposed to hire more people uh, this 
uh, autumn. Uh, mm -hmm. But we said that we, okay, we should wait until, you know, the pandemic, you know, kind of uh, gets done with. But then uh, something happened that they uh, released the restrictions. So everyone started doing events outside instead. But now we're back again with uh, the restrictions and we are, you know, it's hard to plan forward. But building a team, I think here at Virtual Star Studios, it's just me doing all the virtual production stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it works good, uh, but I would really like to have someone else so we could kind of share the duties. I'm doing a lot of things at the same time. I can't really give you any good advice in uh, building a team. Uh, uh, re particularly regarding virtual production, but I would say uh, get a good get a good base of 3D freelancers that can help you build 3D sets uh, mm -hmm. and help you modify sets. Because I think the the majority of time uh, of my time and uh, the 3D guys' time uh, or the time in whole at Virtual Star Studios is about preparing the 3D scenes and building the 3D scenes. That's what takes the most of time. Uh, so figuring a way out to doing that more cost effective would be uh, would be good. But it's you know it could be cost effective if you just buy something from the Unreal Engine store. But you still need to uh, even if you buy a ready set from Unreal Store, there's often a, a lot of things that you need to fix and prepare to to be able to do it in uh, in a real time work production uh, like here. I, I'm in the process of building a team myself, so... <laughs> yeah, if someone wants to uh, work with Richard, you know what to do, I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe... Yeah, send me an email. <laughs> yeah, maybe hear someone who will work with you in the future. And uh, yeah. we now, actually, we know uh, what is like the different parts of the virtual production studio. We know how to... Mm, difficult to, to build a team how like because uh, i think it is not so many professional because uh, it, it, this market is quite young uh, we like uh, this is just a couple of uh, cases uh, that is promoted worldwide like Mandalorian. uh it's not so yeah. many big uh big, big projects uh, based on virtual production yeah. before this year uh, that's why i want yeah. to ask you about uh, like your project, what is the hardest one for you for, from this year? Yeah, we did this huge, you know, Paradox Interactive event. Uh, it was, you know, took up two months of our time almost in pre-production. Uh, you know, we had, I think we had something close to 15 scenes or 15 worlds uh, that were developed by a huge team of 3D designers in the, in Canada uh, and we were shooting for a, a week straight here uh, mm -hmm. doing everything and it was you know so many people and so many uh, the, the hardest part about that project was that I was the only one who knew anything about word production so it was hard to you know explain all the concepts to everyone and working with 3D designers who are used to doing uh, 3D designs for games. Uh, and it's, you know, it's hard to have a, we were a team of like, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 people, you know, working spread out all, all over the uh, world. And, uh, you know, the hardest part about that was you, you got to have meetings all the time. So you got to have meetings all the time. Yeah, this but is also the question uh, I have. How did you manage all the team? Do you use some tools for remote control or how do you work with uh, it? The client was a big event company in uh, in Canada who were handling the this uh, the event for Paradox Interactive and they were excellent in, you know, managing the project uh, but uh, keeping track of uh, all the 3D scenes was a uh, was a pain because we worked uh, I think we did because uh, they were developing everything in Canada and uh, since we're on a time difference when they were finished I got sent you know the latest version through uh, 
uh, some version control software. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll, I think we did GitHub actually. So they just pushed everything to GitHub, and then when I came in on the morning, I could download it, and we could load it up here, and we could do all all the tests. So it worked pretty good actually, because uh, then we had the version sharing through GitHub. Uh, I think my CTO would be happy with this. He's a big fan of GitHub. Yeah, <laughs> I use GitHub for you know my personal programming project as well. But uh, I really want to get something. And that, that, that's an, one of the things I'm working on: how to get you know make it easier to work on the same project at the same time. Uh, and that's something uh, that we need to figure out. The project was yeah. A pain in that with a lot of meetings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, totally understand. Uh, and you say that you have your own programming projects. What it is? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a uh, creative at heart, so I just I do I do a lot of stuff. Right now, I'm working on uh, on my own teleprompter software because I oh. I tried all the teleprompting uh, apps and. You know, it's the same way with exactly like with the tracking systems. Yes, I could go out and get Stipe and Moses and it will probably work fine, but it costs a million fucking bucks. I don't know. It's so expensive. And it's uh, the same with teleprompters. Yeah, you could use the iPad once, comparing that to using a Wive. It kind of works, but it kind of does, doesn't work. <laughs> uh, or you could go out and buy the big teleprompter solutions for, you know, tens of thousands of US dollars. And uh, I won't do that. So I just building my own teleprompter software. So that's what I'm using for uh, for GitHub, uh, you know, version control for uh, stuff like that. So and this is a very good point to start to talk about the future of virtual production, because now we are like uh, on the beginning stage. Uh, it is growing, it is uh, like a little bit more uh, affordable for now uh, for different developers yeah. from different sides of this world and what i want to ask you totally we both uh, both of us understand this is uh, the fast growing market we see it uh, from your followers we see it from the facebook we understand it from our yeah. orders and uh, i want to ask you about uh, your vision uh, like what is the future for virtual production what would be next products? What would be next big names? How it will like, uh, evolve? Uh, I've been thinking about this as uh, a long time. Uh, I think that LED or a green screen won't matter in the next one, two, three. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to be that optimistic. Maybe in five years, because uh, then uh, I think the uh, artificial inte intelligence and also the lenses. Uh, uh, can uh, you know you just figure out what you want to keep in uh, in in the in whatever you're shooting? So, for example, if we're shooting someone, I can just uh, tell the camera uh, to keep, I, I want to keep uh, this man or this uh, woman in and remove everything else. And I think you will be able to do that in real time. You can do it right now uh, via some uh, machine learning technologies. Uh, and I think that in, in the near future, you won't need that LED wall or a um, uh, green screen to be able to uh, keep just one, uh, just keep the people. Because uh, uh, I think the computers will handle that for you to take everything away. And I think the most recent example of technology moving fast is when I uh, stumbled on, uh, you know, the deep fake. Uh, uh, real-time deep fake uh, application because uh, you you've been able to do deep fakes for a while but it took a long time to uh, you know get uh, the results that you now can get in real time in 1080p 25 uh, frames per second so I, I think this technology is not that far away what do you think for uh, about deep fake from the business side how it will looks like because if you want to play with some famous talent on your side and don't want to pay millions of dollars uh yeah you you will like let's say rent uh the face and uh, find some people who just uh, in the same shape what do you think about it 
Uh, I, I think it's uh, not gonna. Yeah, you can do it, but if you're doing it as a business, you're gonna get sued really fast. <laughs> So, uh, painting a nightmarish picture that you can do uh, fake videos and fake news, but you know, people gonna know it's it's not gonna be obvious. I don't know if a big, you know, a big pol politician or big states are using it. <laughs> no, you you gonna you you you're probably gonna be able to tell, and uh, and I, I I don't think it's a problem. And if you as a business do a commercial with Nicole Kidman without her consent, you're gonna be in a big problem. So. But actually, I think it's a good, it could be a good uh, business for, for example, Nicole Kidman or Tom Cruise. If they don't have the time to be on set, they could just, you know, license their uh, face out. So, <laughs> so people can use their face in commercials by paying a fee to Tom Cruise. So yeah, you could, um, make, you could make a lot of money. Actually, I, I'm not sure on... the, that you see this case, but in Russian, one uh, telecom operator already use yeah. Bruce Willis face and they license him to make a, oh, really? yeah to make a, a commercial uh, with the deep fake uh, yeah that's why it's uh, already not the future it's nowadays and it's fun yeah. uh, because you, cool. you, you can have uh, as many Bruce Willis as you need yeah exactly and if you use virtual production you can put them wherever you want yeah in the, in the future or in the past <laughs> Yeah, so I, th I think it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's coming along. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm not afraid of technology. It's it's just a good thing, I think. Okay, uh, I think uh, the guys who uh, came to our stream uh, want to know about your customers and customer base. Uh, could you tell us about them and uh, like what people mostly look for uh, virtual production for? Uh, is it advertising or music video or I don't know, maybe some short movies, what it is? Yeah, we actually, we, you know, when, when we started this uh, company, we were uh, supposed uh, to do more of uh, films and uh, advertising and a lot of, you know, our own projects. Uh, to be able to quickly create content for, for example, our own musical project. Because uh, Emma, my partner, is from the music business, and uh, she's a songwriter and uh, a, you know a, a manager and producer and concept uh, creator. Uh, so we were supposed to create a lot of avatar concepts and doing our own uh, musical acts, and use the studio to be able to create content really quickly. Uh, but then the pandemic hit, and uh, you know, we were just flooded with the uh, digital events. So uh, you know, the past year we only been doing digital events mostly. Uh, but now we're trying to uh, broaden our client base a bit, and we've been working kind of kind of hard on profiling that, and you know, kind of attacking those areas in advertising and film and, uh, you know, other corporate uh, work without being in di digital events. So r right now it's, you know, we, and what we're trying to do, and I think it's a good a good thing uh, that uh, my other partner, Kalle, is, uh, is doing a lot, is trying to find uh, the companies, the big companies, that have the big uh, contracts with uh, the businesses. So, for example, if you're going to work with uh, H&M, they already are contracted with an ad agency or an uh, event ag agency. So if you can nestle yourself into the ad agency or the event agency or some other production company, because these three, they already have a lot of clients. So that means that you will only have the contact to the uh, event and the ad agencies instead of having uh, to go out and hunt all these small, small uh, businesses instead. So go get the client. Your client should be the client that has many clients. So they come, they come to your studio, 
with their clients. Does that make sense? I don't know if I explained it correctly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, yeah. And I, I have one additional yeah. question for this. Uh, and how do yeah. you work with the uh, customers? Because uh, virtual production is a brand new thing for them. And uh, actually, I, uh, I, I totally sure that in 90% situation, they don't understand what they will have. Uh, in a final exactly, and and that's uh, a that's a good point because uh, we often and we, we do uh, our uh, uh, maybe you call it pre-sale. Uh, what we do is uh, part of our pre-sale is to get people to get hyped out about uh, hyped out hyped up about the uh, potential of virtual production. So what we do is that we often spend quite quite some time to building a mock-up world for them. Uh, you know, putting their logos in and showcasing, and pretty much showing them how this could look for for them. Uh, and then we're sending, you know, a two-minute sizzle reel with really nice-looking footage, and we have people walking in their world. And we do, we we kind of do a lot of uh, that things right now to be able to show them. So if you're a client on the other side and you receive this video and you can see your logo on this amazing 3D, 3D scene, you, you, you kind of have them there. You, you, you have them hooked because they can visualize how their end product will look like. So that's a good tip. And it doesn't take that much long to just whips, wisp something together and sh to be able to show them uh, since it's so fast doing it in Unreal Engine and in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and how often your customers uh, came with a strange, crazy ideas? Like, please, could you put something here and change here? That's the thing. That, that's the thing. I'm still waiting for the client who really can give us something to, uh, uh, you know, give us a challenge. Uh, we're trying to push the clients a lot, but they, they kind of just don't want to do some crazy stuff. They just want to do, uh, uh, you know, regular stuff. They just want to stand there, show something and talk about something. Uh, but we're sitting here, okay, we can, we can make the world explode. We can do everything. But uh, uh, I think we you have to ease everyone into it. Because uh, even though that we say you can do everything, uh, they don't really understand uh, yeah, I think you need just the first customers who are ready for everything. Like uh, uh, exactly. and, uh, all other guys and, and girls would start, hey, we want to do the same. This is how the industry exactly. works. That's our tactic on social media as well, to just uh, inspire and show clients. Because we, we get a lot of uh, people calling us, oh, I saw this thing and we kind of want to do something similar. Because it's hard for people to visualize what they can do if they can't, if they haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, could you please remember the funniest pre-sale of yours uh, when you got the customers on your studio and uh, show something and change something? What is like the best case? I think the best case is, <laughs> is when we brought a client in and we had prepared a three D scene. Uh, and uh, we start the meeting, uh, and then uh, we quietly put the TV on with the live scene. So during the meeting, the TV comes on, and we see uh, you know New York with a lot of advertising and skylines, and lo uh, and we have the logo of their uh, uh, our new clients opposite. Or uh, how do you say that? It's it's their. Uh, the rival enemies of that company. So we put put the TV on with the rival logo everywhere, and then we and and they starting to you know uh, be very un, un, uncomfortable with and and after five minutes someone has to ask, so why did you put up TV and the world with all our rival client logos? <laughs> oh, oh yeah yeah, just go down, go down on the green screen, and here's here's a button. Uh, and uh, the guy, the CEO, goes down to uh, to the green screen floor, and he can see himself in the world with the rival logos. And then we tell him, push the button, <laughs> and he push the button, and all the logos explode. And then we just show up their uh, their own logo. 
and uh, yeah, we we got we 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 hooked them on that. <laughs> so that, that, that's a good way of playing with uh, in water production and the real time thing to to really sell it. They signed the contract. Yeah, of course. <laughs> We talk about the hooks, uh, like uh, the sales activities and all other stuff. And uh, right after these things, what is the hardest part about working with a client? Like what you have to do, what is uh, like the thing to discuss with the customers? Maybe the things you uh, don't have to do. The problem has been that we talk about uh, water production to be something amazing and you can do everything. And then... Uh, when you start really talking about the project, it will, it will be like, okay, we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to do that. And then we're like, ah, it, uh, that's going to be too expensive, that's going to take too much time. Oh, we can't do that because it's going to take too much time on the recording day because we need to set up this and that and that. And that. Wow, wow. Well, what we tried is to get some you know, templates going. Uh, that we have, Because right now we have a few set templates that we can do really quick. But that but we, what we noticed is that people don't want to use the templates. They want to use their own scenes and uh, do, do it in their own way. Uh, I kind of want to make it easy for the client and give him whatever he wants. But to give him whatever he wants, it will take a lot of time. So the problem we have is we want to give the client whatever he wants without it costing too much and taking too much of our time. And that's something we're working on right now. Uh, but for the past you know, half year, we have said yes to everything, even though it maybe have taken a lot of more time, because we really want to get to the point that we can do pretty much everything really quick uh, in the set building and building stages. And I think the way of getting there is having a lot of uh, modules or assets packs that you can just model your own uh, worlds from whatever the client needs because uh, the clients rarely want to use something that they are straight out of the box uh, they always want to do some uh, some of their own uh, calibre uh, you know special things and uh, even though it's super easy and unreal it still takes a lot of time but it, uh, we're working on trying to get that faster and easier. I don't know. Does it make sense? It totally makes sense for me. And uh, right after uh, this podcast, we will ask our uh, community, is it okay? Because uh, still we have just one hour and we have last 10 minutes right now with you on this uh, first pilot uh, phase podcast. And we will get the feedback and we'll ask what uh, goes wrong, what is the questions, and maybe, maybe uh, in the future we will... Uh, create the second series of this podcast because uh, you like one of the uh, most important uh, partner for us right now because uh, you open for other doors to virtual production we start to explore in this market you help us a lot that's why uh, I think this is not the last time we're talking about it and what I what what I would like to yeah, what I would like to ask you, uh, this is about like your crazy idea. We understand that the customers sometimes think out of the box, but uh, you understand better than anyone uh, that the virtual production give you like a god mode uh, in a PC game. And uh, what you would like to like achieve, what would you like to shoot or to do in virtual production? Maybe you have some sense that you're dreaming about. My colleague asked me a lot. Okay, but really, Richard, what, what do you what do you want to do? Uh, and I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just want to do cool cool shit, you know, cool amazing things. But what I want to really want to do uh, that I've been talking about for I don't know two years is I want to make. Uh, I don't know if you, you've seen uh, the Norwegian guys. They made an interactive TV show uh, where uh, it was kind of virtual reality combined with the TV elements and you, could, you couldn't you could really participate from uh, your sofa, I think. But that's what I want to do. I want to do uh, 
as, as you know, it could be a Twitch show, it could be everything that are with live participants. So pretty much what they do with uh, when they do the game uh, or the live shows in Fortnite. But since you're using a game engine, you could pretty much create a multiplayer game in real time and stream it to Twitch or live broadcast. Yeah, this and is have, uh, like, a, uh, this like a VTubers, uh, virtual influencers, and also like a TV show that name is uh, Alter Ego. Yeah. I think uh, this is yeah, the, the quite famous show uh, with virtual avatars. And uh, yeah. what is the next step for your business uh, on it? You want to like focus on the, the big dream or you want to open more studios worldwide? or you want to just yeah, shoot uh, the projects? No, uh, our vision is actually to, uh, you know, get a good uh, work in Virtual Star Studios here in Stockholm with, you know, all the workflows, all the pipelines, uh, everything structured and ready to go and being a company that are uh, going with profit and, uh, you know, being a good, self-contained company and then we want to open up more virtual star studios but the next project we're doing and i've been a bit hesitant about it uh, but now we secured some partners that we're going to do it with and that is uh, building a huge led wall here in sweden and Whoa. it surprises me that nobody hasn't done it yet i don't know uh, but so we said fuck it we, we, I guess we have to be the first on that as well. <laughs> you know, so, cool. so we're going to be uh, in QF. We are starting the project to build a LED wall uh, here in Sweden. And I'm actually looking forward to that. Uh, I never played, I played with an LED wall, but I never worked on an LED wall. Um, so uh, that will be interesting. Yeah, for sure. Be, yeah. This is very good insight. I, I think we have to discuss it uh, right after this call. Yeah, actually, because... I want to talk to you. We have five minutes. I want to talk to you about what tracking system or tracking version of your system do you think I should do for an LED wall? Uh, actually, I'm not sure that I can uncover all the things I can discuss with you. Uh, because God damn it! I thought you were gonna release something yeah. new here. <laughs> we have to imagine that to, uh, like uh, we are not with the fifty people uh, in Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that okay. uh, we're looking uh, on a LED screens uh, for some time, and we already start to play with it, and we already have customers who use our system with LED walls, uh, and we are trying to understand how to make it easier to work with LED walls uh, and how to yeah. integrate our layout into LED walls. And we already have several prototypes that are working quite good. Uh, and I hope yeah. next year uh, we will show up this technology to the world. And also I think nice. uh, you are one of the uh, one of the your company is one of the best options to do some pilot stuff because you know us, we know yeah, you, and we, we understand how to work together on it. That's why, yeah, I think yeah. this is uh, your insight. Something like Christmas, uh, Christmas surprise for me. This is very cool because nice. uh, I never know who asks about the LED virtual production, who can tell me more information about it, and you are yeah. the best person who do. Uh, Okay, I think I have uh, just uh, three minutes and I want to uncover one insight from what we discussed before several times. Uh, I know nice. you have a lot of, like, I think hundreds or even thousand requests about asymmetry, about anti latency, about virtual production and all other stuff. And you usually help to the community. But uh, we discussed before uh, that you are working on some educational course or program or something, and uh, yeah, for sure. And could you tell to the community more what is the stage, uh, how you will promote it, how you will distribute it, what you want to achieve, and what will be included in this activity? Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm not sure yet. I'm. I'm still writing it, but uh, so I. I don't know when it will be released. And I don't know uh, where it will, will be released, but 
I'm in talks with uh, a lot of uh, companies that want to, you know, want to promote it and distribute it. Uh, but I don't know if I'm going to go that route or I, if I'm going to distribute it myself. Uh, we'll see about that. Uh, yeah. But uh, it, it's in the works, at least. But I just have to manage my time, uh, <laughs> as we talked about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it only. okay uh, I think this is the good point to finish our first podcast I hope uh, it will be interesting for the community and we have several insights at least and also you yeah. understand that the Richard works on this uh, I totally sure amazing course that will help you to build uh, amazing virtual production studios by your own and to understand how to work with all the hardware you will have uh, on this market. Uh, and I think you have to follow Richard if you're still not. Uh, I think you can follow us if you're still not. And uh, we will come to you with asking uh, to provide us with feedback on this podcast uh, with the questions uh, we are not to ask here. Uh, and next time we will inform you about the next guest uh, who will describe more about maybe virtual reality or even uh, virtual scouting for virtual production or all, all other stuff that we are not covered today. Uh, that's why I thank you, Richard, uh, for this evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you to choose me the... instead of your children. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And thank you to the community for this stream. Thank you to coming to us. I hope you are happy with it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.